welcome to my channel. Welcome to today's video. Today's video is going to be all about the Glaminatrix Rich Romantic Palette. So I'm going to just be doing three looks with this palette, going over my thoughts on the formula, if it's the same as other Glaminatrix palettes. So if that sounds good to you, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't yet. I would love it if you stuck around. And with all that, let's just get started talking about this palette. All right. So let's get started talking about this palette. I was so excited when she showed this palette on her Instagram. I just thought it was so pretty, so different for like Western fall in Australia, which is where this brand is located. I believe that their seasons are in reverse, so it's more spring there, but this was just like a nice refresh from all the fall palettes we've been seeing. Now this did launch quite soon after the sugar and spice palette which i already do have a review up on my channel for this so this is what this palette looks like and i actually did a video doing three looks with all the glaminatrix palettes that i have so three looks with into the night nearly natural and sugar and spice that video will be linked up above and down below in the description box as well as all the makeup that i'm wearing on my face today as always so it is the same size as this. You can see that here. And it has like the same material, this kind of like faux leather feel. I quite like this layout. I like how it's cohesive. The Into the Night, this kind of shape palette, I don't love as much. And the Nearly Natural is a little bit bigger, but that's because the pan sizes are smaller, which I'm not upset about. I am never going to go through an eyeshadow in my life, I don't think. So you can kind of see the pan size difference. I prefer this. Now, this is a very special palette. It does have four multi-chromes, eight mattes, and then some other specialty finishes. It's about half and half from shimmer to matte ratio, so I don't mind that too much. I am going to just throw up my swatch pick real fast, and we'll go over the shades here. So first up, is Admire, which is a matte, Romantic, which is a duochrome, Intoxicating, a matte, Captivating, a sparkle shimmer, Timeless, a matte, and then we have four multi-chromes, so Charming, Seductive, Rich, and Magnetic. Then the last shimmer in the palette is Allure, and this is a metallic shimmer. And then the last five colors in the palette are all mattes. So Lover, Devotion, Cherish, Intimate, and Passion. So those are just some quick swatches. I already did two looks with this palette yesterday. So I'm going to kind of do voiceover style for that. Go over my looks, kind of just first impressions. And then I was thinking that I would do a third look after those two looks and just kind of talk about my final thoughts while doing a third and final look just to save some time i think so let's just hop into the first look with this palette my very first time trying it and i always prime my eyes with the nars soft matte concealer and first off i just used intoxicating to lay down a base on top of that and next went into devotion kind of just in my crease area there to just add a little bit of that coral and then next I took the shade Admire in the outer part of my crease there. And I'm kind of just blending the two shades together to kind of get like more of a pinky orange versus just a pink or a coral. And afterwards I took the shade Lover, which is like a deep rich plum to add some depth into the outer corner there. And I'm kind of trying to make it a little bit more of a cat eye effect, not a rounded effect where I'm bringing the shade up into my crease. And then next, the fun part, I took the Multichrome Charming all over the lid. I did first apply my NYX Glitter Glue, which you'll see there. And this shade is just beautiful. I was not expecting the Multichromes to look the way they did. I mean, I was blown away at that point. I was kind of just admiring the shift over and over again. But once I had that laid down, I took Romantic, which is that duochrome in the inner corner there. And just to brighten it up a little bit, this is really kind of the only inner corner shade, in my opinion, in the palette. You could also use Intoxicating, I guess. 
afterwards I just kind of made sure the multi-chrome and lover were nice and blended there was a smooth transition between the two shades there so I'm just kind of making sure I like that blend afterwards I took the shade admire on the lower lash line along with lover to just add some depth but I mostly wanted that admire shade on the lower lash line I don't really like too dark of an under eye so that's kind of what I'm doing and lastly I took the shade passion and lined my lash line with it just to add a little bit more definition to my lashes so that's what I'm doing there and that completed the first look nice easy simple one multi-chrome you're gonna see the look with and without my glasses just to show if you have glasses Now for the second look, I wanted to play more with the purples there, so I did not set it down with intoxicating. I'm going directly on top of my soft matte concealer, and I took the shade Cherish, which is the lighter purple, and I put that all in my crease. Because I didn't set it, I really had to kind of tap the pigment where I wanted and then blend it out. It was a little bit more difficult to blend for me. I find that it's very similar to Glaminatrix formula where you have to press instead of just blending. Then I took the shade Intimate, which is the darker purple, to kind of go in the outer corner, add depth as usual. And that shade I was able to get to pick up a little bit better because I'm doing more of that pressing and blending motion. So I was able to get the payoff that I wanted from that color more so than the Cherish color. And I'm kind of just blending those two. These shades are very similar. I'll talk about it in my final thoughts, but one's just more of a cooler purple, one's more of a warmer purple. I don't know if you needed both. And while I was at it, I just took Intimate and put it on the lower lash line. Then I went in with my NYX Glitter Glue because I didn't want fallout since I already had my base done. And for the multi-chrome, I took the shade Magnetic. All these multi-chromes are just so stunning and beautiful. I didn't even want to use two different shades because they just stand great on their own. I think that these multi-chromes are really just a one and done look and the mattes just really complement them. So I'm just placing magnetic where I want and again taking romantic on the inner part of my lid and the inner corner to just add some brightness. I did take my Dior black liner because I thought that this look would look better with a black liner rather than one of the shadows in the look. So I'm just lining my top lash line a little and my bottom lash line to just make sure that it's cohesive. And that was the final look. Here you can see both eyes done with mascara and liner. And of course, with my glasses, which I just feel more comfortable and more confident wearing. So those were the first two looks I did with this palette. I loved both of them. I probably liked the purple a little bit more. What makes it tough about this palette, I could have kept going with looks. I actually considered like, do I make this five looks instead of three? But I didn't want this video to be too, too long. So let me know if you wanna see more looks with this palette, I could definitely do it. The issue is just, usually I try to use every single shade and because these multi-chromes stand on their own, you don't need that many shades to do a complete look. So I am just gonna start on my third look here and do my makeup, finish this off while I just talk about the formula. Now on her Instagram, I'm taking the shade Intoxicating. I'm gonna do a very simple look for this. I purposely did colorful looks, so today I could do more of a basic look. I think, honestly, I'm gonna just take these three, so I'm not gonna talk too much about the shades. And I might take the shade Rich here, I haven't decided. But those will be the shades that I'm working with. Now on her Instagram, she says that this is a different formula from Sugar and Spice. And I just, I don't know if I agree with that. Of course I didn't make this palette. She would know better than I would, but I find the formula very similar. I would love to know what was kind of different about this palette because with Sugar and Spice versus the Nearly Natural, I'm finding it very similar as far as it being more of a pressed pigment. Less, it's not as easy to blend as I would like it from other palettes that I have. Just especially with the mattes, I don't know. I, I find that the shades can be a little tricky to work with. I love both of these palettes. In fact, 
This is probably my favorite palette out of the four that I own. Nearly Natural was my favorite. I think that Nearly Natural and this palette would actually be really great companion palettes together because you kind of have like these special shades but that's what I just love about this one. I love the fact that it's kind of just a one and done. A lot of times, you know, I own quite a few multi-chromes and I don't reach for them as much as I want to because it, it's kind of a pain. I have to pull out the multi-chrome. I have to pull out a companion palette. This really has everything you need. It just has like a lot of shades and I'm used to when using a palette, maybe using, you know, four or five shades. But if you're just dipping your toes into multi-chromes, I think that this would be a great, great palette because you have everything you need to create a cohesive look with this palette. So I am now, I'm going to go into the shade Rich, which is like this very pretty multi-chrome. I'm not going to put my NYX glitter glue because I want to see how it lays without it. Of course, it's probably just going to be less pigmented. And then I'll maybe use that captivating shade on the inner half. But you can see, you know, I just used two mattes and now I'm using that multi-chrome and that's really all you need for this palette. You really don't want to, in my opinion, use too many shades when using a multi-chrome because you want that multi-chrome to stand on its own to really just show off the eye look. Like that is the star of the show. So that's why I just think, I don't know, what I'm trying to say is like there's good and bad to this palette. I don't think for me at least I'm going to get very intricate looks with this palette. I did on her Instagram see some very just artistic looks so clearly it can be done. I am just not as creative as that so if you're more creative I think that there's something for everyone in this palette and the reason I just think that this beats out the Nearly Natural is because of the special shades. The Nearly Natural, let me grab it, does have, you know, some special shimmers, but they're really just your typical shimmer formula. They are extra special, like they're indie quality. They're not mainstream Charlotte Tilbury or anything like that. They're a little bit special, but this palette, this palette really shines with its multi-chrome formula. I'm just very, very impressed. Like, did you see how fast it took me to do this eye look? I need to do the lower lash line. But I would say in terms of just like having a look that looks like you spent a lot of time on it, but you didn't, this is the palette for you. And I'm just blown away. I feel like Glaminatrix is really just every single time stepping up their game. So I'm excited to see what they come out with in the future. And I'll probably continue to pick up their palettes. They did come out with some singles. You'll have to let me know if those interest you because I kind of want them, but at the same time, I don't reach for my singles as much as I would a palette like this. So let me know your thoughts down below. Yeah, like I just think this looks beautiful, stunning. I think I am going to line with passion. Let me just do my liner and mascara and then I'll come back, we'll wrap up this video. Here's the completed eye look. Now, all right, let me try to just say this in a more articulate way. I love this palette, 10 out of 10, would repurchase again. It beats out the Nearly Natural for me. I think, you know, Nearly Natural put Glaminatrix on the map, in my opinion. I think that this just far surpasses that palette in terms of what people want from an indie company. It has those special shades. It has good mattes. I don't think that they're beginner friendly. That's my only con, especially these purples. The purples are what I had the hardest time with. Purples are hard to make. And I also find, you know, if we're going to talk about cons, maybe these two to be a little bit repetitive. I don't think we needed both. You kind of have a more warm tone purple, a more cool tone purple, but I had more trouble with this shade versus this shade. I think this could have been replaced with something else. I also think this shade's kind of unnecessary in my opinion. It could have had like maybe, I don't know. I don't know what I would replace these two shades with, but I would say like to be my perfect palette, like if I designed it, I don't know if I would have put these two in. Other than that, formula solid. These multi-chromes are beautiful. 
And, you know, my only, the only thing I'm upset about is I couldn't create more looks or use more shades in this palette. I could have kept going. I could have done more and more looks. Like I didn't do anything with these greens here. That would have been really pretty. I didn't do anything with, I did use most of these, but like this green, this green, I didn't use. I could have done so many more looks with this and that doesn't always happen to me. A lot of the times I have a palette, even if it has 15 shades, and I'll do like the same looks. It's it's rare where I'm like inspired to continue to go. And I had to stop creating looks yesterday after my two because my eyes just didn't feel great enough to continue on or I would have done more. So I think that this is good for beginners. Other than the mattes, like just know it's going to take a little bit longer to blend out. I maybe, if you want, don't use a concealer as a primer because that probably is also not helping me as far as sticking the pigment down. But I think this is good for beginners. I think this is good for people who like more intricate looks with multi-chromes. I think it's good for everyone. I would highly, highly recommend this, this purchase. If you haven't tried Glaminatrix yet, I don't think you'll be disappointed in this formula. I like the smaller pan size. That really doesn't bother me at all. You'll have to let me know down below in the comments if that's something that bothers you. But personally, like I know I'm not going to hit pan or finish any of these shadows anytime soon. So I'm not mad at it. I do believe that a lot of times Glaminatrix will sell some of the singles separately. And it did also say that these pans are magnetic. So if you wanted to take them out, you could. I did not test that because I don't have the right tool and I don't want to ruin this palette, but that's what I saw on her Instagram. So that's an option for you as well if you're someone who likes to rearrange their palettes. But I think that's where I'm gonna leave you all. This was just gonna be like a quick, simple inspiration look video and talking about my thoughts on this. Let me know down below if this palette is on your wish list, if you already picked it up, if you just don't like the color story at all. I would love to hear your opinions on Glaminatrix, but that's where I'm gonna leave you all. I hope you're having a great one and I will see you in my next video. Bye everyone.